Let us build the house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and vision, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good morning and welcome to our Light of Christ Catholic Collaborative Mass for the third Sunday of Easter. Today we're at Holy Ghost Church. I'm Father Bob Cullen, the parochial vicar here. Let us begin our Holy Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in, and made them stand before the Sanhedrin. The high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than man. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, 
for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. The second reading is from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe, cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ is the first fruits from death, filling the church with his glory. Darkness vanishes in the light of his power. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, by the dis- but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? 
They answered him, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them and in a like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grew old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signaling by what kind of death he would glorify God. <clears throat> and when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This being the third Sunday of Easter, I thought I would um, contemplate on three points that I'd like to share from my own reflection of this gospel. Everyone talks about how things come in threes, weddings and funerals and births, which is a reference, of course, to our Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so it's interesting that on this third Sunday of Easter, we read from the gospel that this is the third time that Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. During the beginnings of our church, it was important that the disciples not lose hope. And so the risen Jesus continued to appear to them until the time of the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit of God would come to abide with them and strengthen them for the work of spreading the gospel. Seeing the resurrected Jesus once, they may have thought that they had seen a ghost or that their grief had gotten the best of them. The second time when Jesus appeared to them, they were all in that locked upper room. And he said to them, peace be with you. Their amazement and utter joy could have clouded their judgment about the reality of Jesus' resurrection. But by the third time, they must have begun to make sense of all that Jesus had told them about what would happen after his death. And so it is for us. We need to celebrate and contemplate the mysteries of Christ's life and death and resurrection over and over again until the true message becomes clear to us and changes us and strengthens us for the work of spreading the gospel. The second point I want to talk about is what happened on the shore with Jesus and his disciples after he assists them with their fishing duties. When they finally all come ashore after dragging their tremendous catch, Jesus cooks them breakfast. Imagine our crucified and risen Lord, God, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of all, stopping to cook these guys breakfast. 
We all know how important food is to our existence, but do we ever stop to think about how we use food in every happy or sad or mundane or significant events in our lives? We have wedding banquets, funeral collations, graduation parties, summer cookouts, family holiday parties, and Thanksgiving feasts. Food gives us strength physically and mentally. Sharing meals in large groups or just going out to dinner with a few of our friends can be relaxing and it also provides us with a forum to talk, to hash over problems or questions, to figure things out, or just to formally remember times gone by. Jesus knew this, which is why our Eucharist is central in the way that we worship. The last time he shared a meal with them was during the Passover meal when our Eucharist was instituted. On the beach, he cooks them a meal not only to nourish and strengthen them for the work of that day, but to reiterate how important the taking and the blessing and the breaking and giving of our Eucharistic meal is and how he is commissioning them to go and be the preparers of that meal, just as he has done for them. And then the last point that I wanted to make has to do with Jesus asking Peter again three times, no less, if he loves him. Many scholars believe that Jesus gave Peter the opportunity to make up for the three times he denied him before his crucifixion by answering three times, yes, I do love you. I believe that this was a grace moment of healing for Peter, but in my reading this time, I also picked up on the fact that maybe Jesus was looking for something else from Peter. Peter's answer to the question, do you love me, is followed by Jesus' response three times to do something. Do you love me? Yes, feed my lambs. Do you love me? Yes, tend my sheep. Do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. In other words, I'm looking for a commitment from you, Peter, and the commitment that I'm looking for can't be a simple yes or a blind acknowledgement. It must be a total commitment. Let your yes be yes, and let that commitment color your whole life. Let it be the source of everything you do and say. None of us can follow Jesus in the way he asks unless we first understand his love for us and our love for him. Today, each of us stands in the role of Peter, and the same question is asked of us. Do you love me? If our answer is yes, then we should hear the words that Mary told the waiters at the wedding in Cana. Do whatever he tells you. May God bless you all. Amen. <clears throat>
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are estranged from the Christian family, that they find reconciliation and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, that they be a source of healing and comfort to one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who gather at this table, that they recognize the Lord in each person they meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray also for Helen T. Sullivan, Connor Kelleher Smith, John C. Wade, Nancy Walsh, Evaristo Boliatis, Francis William Del Tufo, and Elizabeth Skeffington, for whom this Mass is offered today. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an end to abortion, euthanasia, the death penalty, and war, and all that threatens life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for all the intentions we bring to this altar in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart. Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. O holy, O holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity our pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, plus to those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate, we believe. Hear a million wounded souls I yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. 
And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for this holy sacrifice of the Mass, celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. Special word of thanks to Elaine, our lector, for Dennis and Lynn for providing the beautiful music, and for our ever faithful and competent cameraman, Kevin. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise, and the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies. Let the mountains skip with gladness, and the joyful valleys ring, with hosannas in the highest to our Savior and our King. Alleluia, alleluia, like the sun from out the wave. He has risen up in triumph from the darkness of the grave. He's the splendor of the nations. He's the lamb of endless days. He's the very Lord of glory who is risen up this day.